I got someone pregnant. I'm gonna remarry her, and we'll live off mom's inheritance. So draft up those divorce papers and pack your bags. Excuse me. This was the same husband who'd ghosted his sick mom, and now he has the nerve to show up. Clearly, he's lost a few screws. He's such a coward and a total loser. But oh, how different things might be if he knew the whole story. That inheritance of yours? Well, it's quite the unique treasure. Take good care of what your mom left you. I'm Maya, hitting the big five zero. I find myself talking to the TV even when I'm alone. Guess it's just one of those age things. Years back in my vibrant late thirties, I lived with my husband Ken and his mom Mary. Although Mary was technically still married to Ken's dad Scott, they'd been doing the long distance thing for years. Given Mary's help. Ken took charge of her medical visits and everyday stuff. That was until I came into the picture, and as a devoted housewife, I stepped up. Mary was a real gem. Our bond was the opposite of those cliche mother-in-law dramas. We were like two peas in a pod. But life took a turn when she had a stroke, left paralyzed and speech impaired. Her zest was gone. She became bedridden. My heart ached, but Ken. He was ice cold. Behind her back, he'd mutter, "Couldn't she have just passed on? This is gonna cost a fortune." Harsh for his own mom, but that was his truth. His visits became scarce, and his apathy was jaw dropping. When she got discharged, I was out of my depth, being a full time housewife with zero caregiver chops. Even with limited trips outside, I had to run errands. And when I suggested we split the caregiver duties, he's like, "Hold up, you want me to do what? Seriously, she's your mom. Look, I'm out working, and you're here. Shouldn't you handle everything? I'm not always home, you know. I do have to go get groceries and stuff." I was floored. I set him straight, and sensing he'd stepped over the line, he backpedaled. "All right, all right. Just tell me what to do." This clear change in attitude irked me. Divorcing him crossed my mind, but I feared how Mary would be treated without me around. But his half-hearted attempts were a joke. He'd often skip the essentials, like changing her diapers, and conveniently escape on weekends, pretending it was for work. Yet he'd return, flaunting his so-called grocery runs that were more about his junk food cravings. Yep, I'd shackled myself to Mister Worthless. I wished I could blame Mary and walk out, but ditching someone who truly cared for me, no can do. Stuck between duty and affection, that house felt more like a prison. Around the third year of caring for Mary, one late night, I was jolted awake by her sobs. I hurried to her side, and she tearfully said, "He left me behind." I tried to understand her through her distress. He was on the phone. Then he just said. See ya, mom, and walked out. Her speech, always difficult, became almost incomprehensible when she was upset. From what I pieced together after telling someone he'd be right there, my husband just left. Exhausted as I was from the daily grind, I kicked myself for not seeing the signs. I wanted to go after him, but look at me. Even my own son left me. You might as well leave too, since we're not even related. She sobbed, her voice dripping with hurt and bitterness. We spent the night in each other's company, trying to find solace. Come morning, I reached out to the police about my MIA husband. Their take: a grown man, probably stressed, just needed some space. I later found out he'd quit his job months ago and had been play acting the whole going to work thing. With no lead on his whereabouts and him blocking my calls, I considered getting a private investigator on board. But with personal computers still rare back then and no detective agencies around, I felt trapped. Mary's heart gave out under the weight of her son's abandonment, and she was gone within a year. I tried calling him from the hospital and the funeral parlor. He didn't even show for her service. His indifference cut deep. The very next day, as I pondered my next steps and the complexities of divorcing a ghost, the front door creaked open. My first thought. Break in. I grabbed a bat, ready to defend myself, but in strolls my husband, like he'd just popped out for a minute. 
I'm back," he said nonchalantly. My emotions whirled. What's up with a bat? What on earth? Why now? Where have you been? Was all I managed to say. Heard about mom. Got something to talk about. Hence my return. What is it? I've got someone pregnant. We want to live off mom's inheritance, so give me a divorce and clear out," he said with a smirk. All I could do was laugh. You're joking, right? What's funny? See, here's the thing: Mary's inheritance, this house included, is now mine. Got her will right here to prove it. He gaped. But I'm her son, and I've been her daughter. Blood ties or not. She always said she valued a caring heart over a son who'd leave her in the lurch. No way! Give me that will. As he lunged, instinct took over, and I swung the bat. It connected. I swear I hadn't planned it. He rushed me, and it just happened. An unfortunate twist in an already twisted tail. Though what I did was painful for him compared to Mary's suffering, it's just a scratch. To be frank, I could have taken another swing or two with that bat, and it would have still felt warranted. Oh, and heads up, I'm the beneficiary of the life insurance, so you're not getting any of that either. You're kidding! He gasped. Whether from the shock of the news or from his injury, I couldn't tell. Look, it's not that you won't inherit anything; it's just unique. And by the way, Scott passed away before Mary did. I didn't tell you since you were MIA. Wait. So there's some inheritance from Dad. Yes, that could cover the baby bills. Sure, if you consider a dilapidated hoarder's palace an inheritance. Huh? I filled him in on Scott's legacy. Mary had long wanted to escape Scott's control, settling for living separately. Scott, on his own, was helpless. He lived off. Convenience store food rarely took out the trash and started hoarding everything from junkyards and beaches. His home became the talk of the town. It's an old mess of a house. Rain pours in and the floors are giving way. Lately, it's been leaning ominously due to a sinking foundation, prompting complaints to the city. He never dealt with it and died, leaving that disaster behind. Given no other relatives and with Mary trusting me with all finances, Ken got lucky with his inheritance. What the heck am I supposed to do with this? You could refuse it, but either way, that mess is on you. Cleaning up will cost a fortune. Why did I get stuck with this? Seems like karma to me. Mary didn't despise you, by the way. She once said it's tough caregiving and blamed herself for being such a weight on you. He looked at me, a mixture of shock and realization. That will was made before Scott's passing. Mary, aware of our long caregiving journey, wanted me to financially set in case we broke up. She was clueless about Scott's house. It wasn't about revenge; it just happened. Tears welled in his eyes as he murmured, "Mom." He confessed the gloom after Mary's stroke was suffocating. Overwhelmed by caregiver duties and daily pressures, he sought solace in an affair. He called it a misjudgment. He ditched his job and home. Planning to dodge his pregnant mistress too, the tale was absurd. More shockingly, her dad was a mob boss. Facing her dad's formidable presence, he got pressured to marry her and bear all costs, from childbirth to relocation. Hence, his hopes for Mary's inheritance. So now what? He sighed. My reply was simple: Karma's a trip, isn't it? In the meantime, I'll wisely use Mary's inheritance. Also, let's get that divorce rolling. After I laid out the facts, Ken, trapped in a marriage with his subordinate, just nodded in agreement. We breezed through our divorce paperwork. Though I urged him to handle his decrepit inherited house, he did nada, even thinking disclaiming that inheritance was too much trouble. But about six months in, a big storm partially brought down the hoarder's house. To make matters worse, the wreckage flew around, causing damage and injuries in the neighborhood. Predictably, he had to face damage claims, and since Scott's death, trash had piled up even more. The town had caught wind of it, this messy house, and locals took it as an invite, sneak dumping their unwanted junk. It basically became the unofficial town dump. They even found asbestos, and since no one could prove who brought it, Ken footed the bill. 
All in all, he owed a whopping $100,000 for trash removal, damage payouts, and my alimony. At first, his second marriage seemed smooth, but when his new wife found out about the house and his slackness in parenting, she was over it. A few years later, they split. She claimed emotional distress, which had him paying even more alimony and child support. I decided not to pursue her for funds, given her kind of scary family ties. I mean, crossing paths with a mob boss's daughter? Hard pass. Now, how do I know all this? Because get this, my shameless ex tried reconnecting, saying, Let's start fresh. I need you. I shot that down real quick. He probably thought I had some cash since I opened a little beauty salon. But the inheritance for Mary was my nest egg, and no way was I sharing it with him. He seemed desperate, but after my firm no, he vanished. As for me, I remarried a couple of years back. My guy's an old high school buddy. After losing his wife early and experiencing his own divorce, we reconnected at a reunion. It started with casual coffee chats, and before we knew it, we were ready for the long haul together. No kid pressures, no parent caretaking. It's a relaxed companionship. The pandemic really spotlighted the value of close bonds, nudging us towards marriage. Even with the whirlwind of my younger years filled with caregiving and work, life's still got a lot left to offer. I'm holding on to a hopeful vision of even happier days ahead, and I'm eager to enjoy each one of them with my hubby by my side.